This episode of Android Weekly is brought to you by FreshBooks. This product has sold over a billion dollars, and that's billion with an A for Apple. So what's up with Android Wear? It's official now. Apple has a license to print money. In what might be the most unprecedented financial return ever for a new product category, the company's quarterly guidance report has numerous analysts concluding that it may have sold over a billion dollars worth of Apple Watch devices in the three months that the wearable has been on sale. Despite what some might call a success, the figure is ironically well below the almost $2 billion that some had expected, an issue that was likely fostered by supply shortages or long waits. Still, this approximated figure means that the wearable earned more money than the iPad did or the original iPhone did when they first launched. Now I know what some of you are thinking, but please stop hating on Apple and challenge Samsung, HTC, Sony, and all these wonderful manufacturers. You had two to three year head start. You had a head start to put out a product out there and use the marketing to capture people's imagination. Normally when a product is first in a category, they dominate that category. They become first in the mind of the user. And that's where the real battle is. But you allowed Apple to come from behind and kick you in the arse. It is not a battle of products. I can hear some of you thinking already, the Android smartwatches are better. I have a couple of them. They're very, very good. But it's not a battle of products. It's a battle of perception in the user's mind. And most users think the iWatch is sexy. But let's move on to some happy geek news. You can now play Half-Life on your smartwatch. Sort of. Dave Bennett has found a way to run Half-Life on his first generation LG G watch. While the beloved game surprisingly actually boots and runs, it's not exactly the sort of experience that will keep you entertained on the bus ride home. Aside from trying to control the game with your finger covering the entire 1.6 inch screen, the frame rate is rather hit and miss. It can go from 30 frames per second to 2 frames per second slideshow. The game is also prone to crashing, which shouldn't be a big surprise. There's also only so much you can do with a low powered Snapdragon 400 system on a chip and 512 megabytes of RAM. To get the game up and running, Bennett makes use of the SD Lash app, which can be used to emulate old titles that run on Valve's Source Engine. Now let's talk about something that gets me all giddy, and it's called machine learning. In brief, machine learning is about machines sharing data with other machines, making predictions, and learning to improve on them without being explicitly programmed to do so. Right now, this topic of machine learning is a buzz among geeks, and there's a whole company full of geeks that are really on the forefront of this, Google. The company has invested heavily in developing software models that can learn and applying them to ever-growing mountains of data. All of Google's services benefit from this approach. Gmail can accurately root out spam, voice recognition in Android has improved dramatically, and image recognition used in photos and maps is growing more and more accurate. This could have a major impact on things like translation. When machines can process mountains of data and process that data and give us the context that we need to understand that information, wow. Things like translators will be obsolete. We won't even need to learn new languages anymore. I mean, look at Microsoft's uh, Instant Translator. It's fantastic. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Now, as wonderful as all our computer devices are, they still can only do what we tell them to do. Imagine for a moment, without a bunch of Skynet fear, if machines could communicate with each other, take that information and decide on how best to act on it in our best interests, the sky is the limit. See, right now, we have to tell our devices what to do. What if they didn't have to do that and we could just live our life and they could give us the information that we need when we need it? Freaking cool. You guys know I will gladly pay for a product that heals a pain point. And few things can be more painful than billing your clients. But FreshBooks makes it simple, painless, easy to use, both for me and the client. And I like that. FreshBooks is the super easy to use invoicing software that lets you create and send sharp looking invoices. Track your time and manage your expenses, all from the comfort of your smartphone. Staying on top of your billable hours is ridiculously simple. Just use the time tracking feature and you'll know exactly what work you did and what client you did it for. Managing your expenses is also as easy as taking a picture of your receipts using the camera on your phone. FreshBooks pretty much does the rest. To get started, go to freshbooks.com forward slash Android and enter Android Authority and How Did You Hear About Us section. 
Thanks for watching Android Army. My name is Jace. Love to connect with you right here on Google Plus and Twitter, and I will follow you in the comments below. Don't forget about my brothers, my brethren, and Android. We're working super hard to be your source for all things Android.